All right, so look, I understand expired listings right now. Yes, they've got motivation, but there's a ton of competition and you probably get one or two expired listings a week, maybe, if you're lucky. For sale by owners, yeah, they're hand raisers, but the problem is, like expires, you probably are getting a couple of weeks, so the opportunity really isn't that great to get listings. And the ones that are listing their property are listing with either agents or companies that are cutting their commission or some type of flat fee MLS. Maybe you're calling absentee owners or downsizers. It's a great niche, yeah, but you're competing with investors and the property condition when you go to list an absentee owner, it's a little dilapidated, so it's not a great listing opportunity. Maybe you're door knocking. Well, it's great to get face-to-face. -face. We know a face-to-face -face appointment changes everything, but it's taking up all your time. Maybe you're buying leads. Great way to get people in the database, but they're very expensive. They take a long time to convert. And maybe you're working your sphere of influence. Yeah, it's the most enjoyable business, but it's unpredictable. What is the point? The point is, is there a perfect lead generation strategy that solves all of these problems? The answer is yes. And so in search for what I call the perfect strategy to get listings, this is a strategy that I'm teaching to all of my coaching clients, literally as we're speaking. And I want to share that same thing with you guys. So in search of the perfect listing opportunity or the lead generation opportunity, this opportunity had to be a situation where there were no competition from other agents. The listings that you were getting were at great price points. You got to pick the ideal neighborhood you want. In other words, if you could wave a wand and say, okay, I want listings in this neighborhood at this price point, and I don't want to compete with any other agents, this strategy is going to help you. This strategy is going to be a process I'm going to teach you in just a second that's easy to convert. You had a full commission. You didn't have to discount your commission, nor were the homeowners or the lead sources you were going after trying to compress the commission. There was no commission compression. This strategy had to be a strategy where the listings that you get are easy to price, they're easy to market, and they sell, check this out, with buyers already wanting to purchase the home, and in most cases, for more than the seller wants for their listing. In other words, this is a strategy, to get the perfect strategy, this had to be a strategy where all of this was true. They're easy to price, easy to market, easy to sell. And you had buyers that had contracts in hand that are already waiting to buy the house and willing to pay the seller more for the house than what the house was worth. You're probably like, dude, come on, Brandon. Are you serious right now? Yes. Furthermore, this lead source had to have an unlimited quantity. There was as many as you wanted that had to be true. They had to be cons a, a consistent pipeline of new listings that never, ever ended. So once you use this strategy, this strategy had to provide an unlimited amount of new listings. It had to give you certainty that the listing is going to sell fast every single time. No more could you go and list a property and deal with a situation where you didn't know if the property was going to sell. This strategy solves all of these. I call it the bullseye prospecting strategy. I'm teaching it to all my coaching clients and you're going to learn about it right now. So I'm very excited if you can't tell, but let me share with you how it actually works. Okay. Step one, we're going to search for a listing in the exact neighborhood that you want to work that sold with multiple offers and had at least 100% or more list to sold price ratio. They had to be higher than 100%. So let's do step one together. And right now you're probably like, oh my gosh, this can't be true, but it is true. And that is why I'm making this video. So I'm logged into my MLS. You can follow along. Your MLS might look exactly like this or it might look a little different. So we're gonna go search. I'm gonna show you exactly what to look for, okay? 
So we're going to go sold in the last 30 days, residential. And I'm just going to put in one of the markets that I work. Whoop, Rochester. And I'm going to put in the price point. I'll put sales. The price point that I want. All right, so I got 23 matches. Now, once you have your matches, just go ahead and click results. What you want to look at now is the days on market, all right? So you can you can uh, look at this from the standpoint of saying, okay, well, uh, I want the lowest days on market. And the reason you want this is because you want to find a house, like I said, with multiple offers that sold for over the asking price. So I look at the days on market, and then I look at the price, okay? And so let me just kind of find one that might look. So like an odd price that says, okay, well, I don't know if that would be the actual price or not, but let me see. Um, let me just look at one here. All right, so there's, that's one, right? So sales price, 460. List price, 450. Sold in six days. All right, so look, this is a great example, okay? Offers due by this date and this time, which means they had multiple offers on the property. So this is a great example of a property that we can use in this strategy. Now, before I show you step two, what I want you to understand, remember if you go back to, okay, what is the perfect listing strategy? It had to, it had to meet all those requirements. So check this out. If we go into this neighborhood, and we utilize the strategy I'm gonna teach you in just a second, we already have all the answers. In other words, we know in this neighborhood right here, and we can map this if we wanted, uh, which we're gonna do in just a second. So we can map the property, right? And I'm gonna grab the address just so I can have this copy and pasted, ready to go for step two. We know the property condition. So we can have all, we have all the photos. We can look through all of the pictures. We know exactly what, uh, all the characteristics of the property. We know exactly where the sellers uh, uh, listed the house. We know exactly what buyers are willing to pay. And oh, by the way, we know that there are more than one buyer that want to buy a house in this neighborhood that are willing. We know with absolute certainty, willing to give sellers more than what they are asking for. We already have the evidence. So that is the key thing with this strategy. So let's go back to, let me go back into the slideshow and let's talk about step number two, okay? And I just talked about all this. So we know exactly what the buyers want. We know how much they're willing to pay. We know how to price the new listing that you're gonna get in this neighborhood. It's the exact neighborhood that you picked at the price point that you want in the market you wanna work in. And again, there's other buyers with signed contracts that are willing to overpay for houses in the neighborhood already. We already know that. Cool. Let's talk about step number two. Step number two is we're going to go into Vulcan 7. There's a link in the description if you want to follow along and get signed up with Vulcan 7. Step two is to get all the phone numbers for all of the neighbors inside this area. Okay, so I just grabbed that. I'm going to log into Vulcan 7. So this is the new dashboard. If you sign up for Vulcan 7, you, you're going to get my reverseselling.com platform. We've partnered with Vulcan 7, so there's a bunch of cool resources on here if you, uh, if you sign up with the link in the description. And so what you're going to do once you're logged in is hit on contacts. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. So we're going to go to neighborhood search. We're going to go start new search. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the property address. Okay, once this links, uh, or, or once this finds the property, I'm gonna scroll down, I'm just gonna back this out a little bit because I want this entire neighborhood. And I'll show you what we're gonna do in just one second. So I'm just looking at the major streets. So I'm kind of looking to say, okay, where does this neighborhood potentially start and end? Because it's really critical, because step three is gonna, really come into play um, as it relates to the location of the data. So you don't want to get data in like a different neighborhood that might be across a, a main street that won't know about this property in particular. 
So you want to make sure that you, you stay hyper, hyper local, like just the neighborhood. And so I'm going to go, I'm just going to stay right in this little area right here because I want the proximity. Again, step three has everything to do with proximity. We need all these neighbors to know exactly what property we are talking about. Because there's such a lack of inventory, this is probably the only house for sale or that have sold in this neighborhood in quite some time. So the likelihood of people knowing about this property should be really high. All right, so once I get my area, I'm going to go ahead and draw a shape around where I want to get. So I'm going to stay right inside this line. And I'm just going to get this hyper local area inside this neighborhood. Okay. So once I have my area selected, I'm going to go over to, um, I want to make sure that I click all of these buttons, right? So likely to list owner occupied, non owner occupied. I want all of those. You can leave single family and condo if you want. The only thing I change in here is length of ownership. So I want to make sure that they've at least owned the house for one year. Okay. And so you could put that up if you wanted to, but the likelihood of someone selling their house less than one year isn't as high, but I want them to be in the home for at least one year. Now, all you have to do is hit generate list and Vulcan 7 is going to go and get all of the cell phones, all of the email addresses for people in that neighborhood. Now, once you have that data, you can upload it into the dialer. And the next thing you're going to do in step number three is you're going to make what I call a service call, not a sales call. It's completely different. You're going to make a service call that outlines the specific property address that you are calling about. It has to be the specific property address. So Mr. Jones, I'm calling about the property located on this street. And here's a key, key, key takeaway. I also want you to reference something specific about the property. So if I go back in here, we look at the property and we, um, so let me just look at any specific characteristic that we could call out. Boom. Okay. What we're going to do, this one has a pool. So when I call, okay, and the script to this exact sales service call is in the uh, description in my script book. Just download the script book, you can get the script. So we're calling in reference to the property over there at 1546 Chevy Circuit. It's the one with the pool. You know what I'm talking about? That's how we open up the dialogue. And so let's pop in here. That's the first thing you're gonna say, all right? So when you, when you, when you call the homeowners. The next thing you're going to say is, we listed the home and sold it for in this case, $10,000 more than what the seller wanted. And here's the best part. We had multiple buyers give the seller more than what the, 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 the sellers were asking for. Now, let me pause for a second. You notice I use the word we. Yes, it's we, we realtors, okay? It doesn't have to be your listing. That is why this strategy is so fire, okay? We listed a home and sold it for 10,000 more than what the seller wanted. And we have buyers. So the next thing is, we have multiple buyers that gave us offers more than what the sellers wanted. And so what we wanted to do, because we know buyers are willing to overpay for homes, they have signed contracts right now, we were reaching out to see if you were considering moving. Because the other buyers wanted to also move in this neighborhood. As you know, there's nothing for sale. We know buyers are willing to give you more than what your house is worth for right now, which is something we've never seen ever. And so uh, we thought that we would call all the other homeowners to see if they were thinking about selling. So you can grab the script inside or uh, right beneath this in the, in the description. This strategy puts you in the driver's seat to go out into the marketplace Pick where you want to work, the exact neighborhoods, the exact price points with properties that you know have purchase contracts with buyers that want to be in that neighborhood specifically with the property that you know inside and out. You have all the data on it. I don't know if there's a better listing strategy than this right now. 
I don't know if right if there's anything out there that would beat this because once you get the data, you can call them. We can knock the door. We can send them mail. We can do a lot of different things to initiate conversations with the property owners in this neighborhood to communicate from a service perspective what has occurred and what is happening with the buyers that want to be in their neighborhood. So let me know what questions you have, but I hope that as you leave this video, your mind is like, OMG. Like I have so much opportunity right now that I don't have to worry about if there's two for sale by owners tomorrow or, or no expireds or absentee owners are being mean. You don't have to worry about any of that. This is a strategy that puts you in control of your business now and for the rest of your career. Let me know what questions you have in the comments. If you found value in this video, I would love to have you consider subscribing to the channel. You can always change your mind later. I put videos out just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So hopefully you got value. If you have questions, let me know, and I'll see you guys in another video very soon.